guys and a warm welcome again to just tv your home for everything entertainment this video i want to put a disclaimer out first forgive me lovers if in the course of this video i get a little bit emotional and i appear to be a little bit too much invested because the video i am going to be doing today is um a true life story and it's one that when it happened, it rocked the nation so hard and people had varying opinions. It even, you know, gathered um, international attention. But one of Nigerians um, filmmakers, she's, is she a filmmaker? Person? Yeah, she has some movies that she's done, some reality series that she's done. And now she is a producer and this movie is on Netflix. I'm talking about Linda Ikeji. Linda Ikeji produced a movie titled Dark October. It was, it was released on Netflix on the 3rd of February, 2023. And I want to review that movie. I want to believe you've seen it. And if you've not seen it, I'll try to not uh, put a lot of spoilers in it. But I've, I don't think I can help it. There will be spoilers in this video. So if you've not seen it, you can relax. Be sure that I'm going to tell you everything that happened in this movie that you, you might not really need to go and see the movie again on Netflix. But you can still decide to go see it. It's all on you. Now, let's get into the review of the movie Dark October. This movie followed the story of four um, Uniport students who were lynched. They were jungle justice actually happened back in October of 2012. Four Uniport students who went to the home of the debtor of one of them. So apparently, you know how university students involved in business, somebody bought um, something and um, you owed student's money so he enlisted the help of his roommate his childhood friend and um another of their friend to go there to scare the debtor away so that they can to scare the debtor so that he can get his money but in the course of doing that the debtor turned on them and labeled them thieves ran away and all of those things and they were lynched by crowd in that community that was basically what happened and this is a true life story what linda ikeji has now done is she's fictionalized this real life story she says that it's inspired by the true story so she changed the names of the characters but she told their story and that is the part that i can't seem to understand you say you want to fictionalize a true life story. If you're trying to do that, you're not going to tell this story. Honestly, I feel like the Alufor situation could be told or should be told in a documentary format. You shouldn't take, I mean, how insensitive can you be? The thing is, you might not really understand why a lot of persons are clamoring for Linda's head after seeing this movie because if you've not seen the movie, if you see the movie and you actually go online and read about what happened to these students, you will know that these guys, these students, that the, the deceased, God continue to rest their souls, deserve more than what Linda made their story to be. Honestly. But let's get into the movie. Let's leave the real life and whatever. Let's get into the movie that we saw. Now, this movie um, was directed by a prolific director. I'm going to butcher his name, so I'm not going to try and mention his name. But he also featured some um, actors who are not the most popular faces, but they are persons that have some acting credit, you know, to their name. From um, Chooks Joseph, we had Munachi Okara, gave us Kemi, um, what's his name now? Kemi Abie. I can't pronounce a lot of their names, so... For the sake of respecting them and their craft, I'm not going to try and do that. I'm just going to refer to them by the names of the character that they played. You understand that? So we had Wisdom, who was a debtor. We had Chibu Zor. We had, you know, um, TK or TZ, actually. We had TZ. We had Lloyd, who is a rapper, and all of that. Now, these guys had such a beautiful friendship. The whole students, they would, they would, they would want, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. Their acting was good, but you would know that these are persons who are not very much used to be in front of the camera, but they still delivered and did a very good job. You'll be immersed in the story. You'll like the story, especially if um, when the Alufo situation happened, if you didn't really know about it, if you were quite young, and it's like the retelling of what happened, you would like it. And the attention to detail is actually phenomenal. I think, you know, after the movie, after seeing the movie, I had to go and search who the um, makeup effects person was, who was in charge. I even thought maybe it was Akim Effects or something, but no, it's not Akim Effects, it's a totally different person who did also a more phenomenal job at the FX 
all of the makeup and everything looked so real. You would think that you were seeing real blood and real flesh. There were a lot of gory scenes. So if you have a kind of person who gets um, maybe nauseated easily or you get um, squeamish uh, quite easily, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you have to skip some parts because I actually did shed tears and I was infuriated by the time the movie ended. There were a lot of real life, almost realistic, you know, um, depiction of burnt human body and it would make you livid about jungle justice all over again the old necklace and tire on the neck lynching of another human person oh how unfair can you be i told you i'm going to be unnecessarily invested in this story but like back to the movie yeah Acting was nice. Like I said, the makeup artist, the FX artist, actually, the makeup FX person did amazing. Producer did amazing. Linda actually did a very good job in the movie. If you take away from the fact that she told someone else's story, if you take away from that fact, the movie actually made sense. The production was nice. She paid attention to detail. Um, editing was nice. Color grading was beautiful. When they were depicting time of the day, when we had early morning, the dawn, you know, it was really dawn. When it was evening, it was evening time. They, they were not trying to, or maybe they did emulate dark time, but it was, you know, there are some movies where you can tell that they shot this in daylight, but they are trying to emulate you no know, night time. But you can tell that this is daylight. No, has was as real as real can get. So I have to give credit to Linda KG for such a phenomenal job. That was nice. The storyline also, um, although sad, was well told. And that is where a lot of Nigerians had problem. Because if you say that this is a fictional story, because when Linda Ikeji put out a press release after a lot of Nigerians came for her saying, we shouldn't have taken this person's story without the involvement of their family members. She said that, well, she actually coined the hashtag Alufo. We're like, it's not about the coinage. We don't care if you were the person who broke the news when it happened, when your blog was hot. That was your job then. But this time you say you want to transition into movie making, you want to be a producer. You have to give credit to who credit is due. You have to go to the family of these guys and let them know that, okay, you want to tell their story. I mean, there was a part in the movie, at the end of the movie, where... Chibuzo, one of the friends that was supposed to actually be in that place in that moment was not around, but he later, you know, something came up, he wasn't there. And she made him, you know, sit and talk about it, if he were there, how he felt. I feel like if we had seen the actual persons involved, the actual family, like, okay, available online is the gist that one of the children, one of the students, their sister was there and saw the lynching of her brother and his friends. If she had contacted her sister, for example, maybe even blood her face and had her do the, you know, the post interview, that would have been nice. A lot of Nigerians would not be on her neck, but Linda came to tell us that, well, she coined Alu for, so she could have taken it, but she used Aku instead of Alu. Oh, when you go and use Alu now, let's come and see what will happen. Maybe that last lost that you think you've escaped, maybe you will not be, maybe people will not file the lawsuits. I don't understand. But yeah, that happened. But the story was nice. In my opinion, I would rate the reincarnation about 8 of 10 if she really did an amazing job at selling the story. However, I would have preferred if it was a documentary and you know you had family members or relatives who in that moment or by now, I mean, because I don't think they will ever stop grieving. The four boys were first sons in their respective families. They had dreams, they had aspirations, they were musicians, rappers who were doing well in the school and were even popular figures in the school. So they sort of had a bright future. And while their families will still be grieving their losses now, I feel like they might have come to a place where they would be able to sit down in front of a camera and say something. Wisdom, the person that is bright, the person that played wisdom, in reality, the guy that was dental, his name is Bright, right? Bright might be alive now somewhere. He might even have children now. He might be, you know, doing well for himself. Even if it's to blow his face, you could reach out to this person and just, you know, have them tell it. That would even give it more credibility. A lot of Nigerians will hype it more than what it is currently. Even if you had other actors, if you had or actors, you know, play the role of the deceased boys, I think that would have given it some more life rather than take their story and say that you are basing it on true life story while actually telling their story. If you want to fictionalize a real life story, 
story. There are some um, nuances that will not be in the movie. There are some things you will take out of the movie. So that when movie critics are, you know, watching and viewing your movie, they will be able to tell that, oh, this is inspired by a true story. This is not a re re reenactment of a true story. There is a difference. And what Linda did was reenacting the story and what happened that very sad day, dark October indeed in Alu, and um, the the old um, braha that followed the experience. But if you want to see the movie, honestly, I'll say see it, but disclaimer, like I mentioned, if you are skimish, please don't go and see that movie, or maybe fast forward and move some parts forward. And if you're quick to anger, maybe you just <laughs> don't see it again, because you want to look for Linda and knock her head like a Benny. How, <laughs> how do you justify what you've just done here? But I want to hear from you in the comment section what you think. I mean, I just said my own ex my, my own um, opinion concerning that October. If you have a different opinion, you can let me know in the comment section. I would want to hear from you. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and please be peaceful. Bye.